Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Jimmy and you're watching Jim Boy Rules. In today's video, we're going to talk about 10 things that I dislike about my car. That is the Z4 S Drive 35IS. So without any further ado, oh wait, 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 wait. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. I mean, you know the drill. You've been watching a lot of YouTube videos these days, haven't you? Let's go. As I mentioned, we're going to talk about 10 things that I dislike about my car. And I know the title says the word hate, but we're not going to use the word hate because hate is too big of a word. And there's not really anything that I hate about my car, apart from maybe one thing, but we'll get to that. I just made a video about 10 things that I love about my car, and I'm going to put it in the description below and link it up here. The disclaimer is that five out of these 10 points are limited and personal to my car and my car only. The remaining five points are general about all E89 Z4s. So point number one, now I absolutely love the convertible loop, the way it opens and closes. It's beautiful, but there is one point that I think that they could have done better. And that is instead of having to press the button and hold it till the whole roof opens. And then if you're closing it, then press the button and hold it till the whole roof closes. They should have just made it where you press the button once, click and it opens all the way. You press it again, click and closes it all the way. I don't understand why does one have to keep it held down because I don't think it needs to be opened halfway where you press it when it's open halfway you let it go like your door windows so I don't see the point now there are some aftermarket modules that you can install where you press a button and it will do exactly what I said you click it and it will open the roof all the way but it doesn't come from the factory so I wish it came from the factory that way. Point number two, the silver kidney grills. Now I know that when the E89Z4 first came out, it came with black kidney grills. And then with the upgrade where they stopped making the manual and there was only the DCT version and the 35IS came out, which was 335 horsepower, they changed it to silver kidney grills and they gave silver mirrors. I don't think the silver kidney grills look better. I think that the black kidney grills made the car look a lot more aggressive. This is one of those points that I think is limited to my car and my opinion to about my particular car where I don't like the silver kidney grill. I prefer the black one and I could probably buy it. I actually did buy it off Amazon. They claimed that it was the original kidney grill from BMW, but it was a fake one. When it arrived, I tried installing it and it would not even fit so I had to send it back but I will do that at some point in the future Point number three, and I think nearly every YouTuber who has owned a Z4 has mentioned this, and that is the cup holders. Some of the YouTubers, they had the older version of the E89 and did not come with the cup holder. It was like a part of some package. That's what I read in their comments. My car does have cup holders in the armrest, but they're pretty useless. One, they're too small. Secondly, they're in the armrest. It's no Hummer H1. It's a small roadster if there are two people sitting in there they need the armrest to be comfortable if you have to open the armrest to put your two drinks which in majority cases two mcdonald's cokes would not fit in those two cup holders you could probably fit only one or unless you have two very small cups of something you can fit two but then you lose the armrest and then it becomes really odd and uncomfortable to have no place to put your arms. There is a small cup holder that comes which you can buy, it's about 150 bucks, that you can install in the passenger footwell. Well, it's not really in the footwell, but it's where the knee of the passenger is, the left knee. It always keeps crashing into the cup holder, but that's for one cup and one cup only. That's pretty useful if you're driving alone, but when you have two cups of driver and the passenger, then you do definitely miss the cup holders. And sometimes placing a really hot coffee between your legs is not the brightest of ideas. 
Point number four, the interior color of the dash trim. Now, don't get me wrong, the interior color, the red color, the coral red, I absolutely love that color of the seats, but I'm talking about the trim, the plastic trim on the dash, which is like old man's brown, mahogany finish, plastic, painted inlays, which is just horrendous. With the red interior, I thought that I would change this to a silver inlay trim, but when I went to BMW and asked them how much it was, it was something around $2,500 to replace all the trims. That is without labor. So labor was another thousand or 1500. I wasn't willing to spend that much. I could have installed it myself, but still just buying it for $2,500 was not something that I was willing to pay. And at the time I bought my car, I thought it would not be that expensive. So at some point I will like wrap it. I do think that wrapping it is like making it look cheap, but I don't want to wrap it. I haven't come across a solution for that. At some point I will do something about it. That brings us to point number five. This point is not limited to just my Z4. It's a universal problem, and that is the garage door opener buttons. My car has them, but it is literally nearly, not nearly, it is actually impossible possible to program those garage doors with the buttons inside the car. If you go to BMW and ask them, they will claim that you should check with your garage door company. There's nothing wrong with the car. Whereas when you contact the garage door company, they will say there's something wrong with the car and there's nothing wrong with the garage door. But then again, over the years, I have tried it several times, watched YouTube videos and asked around and read blogs and but it's just something something that doesn't work. Point number six. Now this is again something limited to my car and my opinion and that is the mineral white color of my car. At the time I bought it I was super excited. I did not realize that there were two whites. The mineral white color is uh, pearlescent or pearlescent or pearlescent. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. It's two-tone, it's dual-tone, it's like a pearl. It has that pearly whiteness, which shines pinkish and purplish at times. But that is if you go really close to the paint to see it. From afar, it looks like it's not being washed. Especially if it is parked right next to a whiter white, like the Alpine white from BMW, then suddenly it starts looking like the paint has degraded over the years and become yellow, or it hasn't been washed, which is not the case. It's just that the color looks like that. As far as it's not parked next to an Alpine white car or a whiter white car, you're fine. But if you happen to buy the mineral white, just make sure you don't park next to an Alpine white BMW. Point number seven, the electronic parking brake. To a lot of people, this might not matter. It matters to me. I think the car is sporty. I go to the track with it once in a while, and I would prefer to have a proper e-brake instead of the electronic e-brake. Maybe, you know, do some handbrake turns or something. Well, that's not the reason why I dislike it. The reason why I dislike it is because if I wanted to upgrade my brakes, which I do want to, I can only upgrade the front brakes because if I upgrade the rears, I lose the e-brake. If I don't want to lose the e-brake, then I have to keep the rear brakes to be stock, which is, is a pain. And I see a lot of people on the forums asking the same question. No, it cannot be upgraded without losing your e-brake. Or someone needs to come up with some fancy e-brake that works with the electronic e-brake. That made no sense. You get my point though. That brings me to point number eight, and this again is one of those things which is a personal opinion about my personal car, but, and I'm gonna get so much shit for this because I live in California. Let me squint my eyes because I'm going to get punched for saying this, and that is, I do miss having 
heated seats in my car. Now, yes, majority of the times the weather here in California is awesome, but that once in a while when it is a little chilly in the morning or when I go to Tahoe, I would prefer to have heated seats. And I think that is the only option that my car does not have. It has all the other options, the M interior package, the M exterior wheels, M steering wheel, navigation, and everything. But it does not have the heated seats, which I do miss. That brings me to point number nine. And the point number nine is Bluetooth. And no, it's not just my car. It's all Z4s and the Bluetooth has a lot of glitches. So it is very temperamental. So before you get in the car, you keep your fingers crossed that it will automatically connect because if it doesn't, then you have to go through the menus and fidget with it and fiddle around for it to connect to your phone. Six or seven out of 10 times it will connect, but the remaining three or four times it is not in the mood to connect and it won't connect. The 10th point, and this is the point that I really, really, really hate. And this is the only point I hate about my car. Absolutely everything else is something I can live with, I'm fine with, but this is the point that I really get annoyed with. And that is everything squeaks. And I convince myself that it is because they're trying to say wait, but you put your hand on the armrest and it goes chin chong chin chong, and you put your hand on the other side, the door side armrest, it goes chin chong chin chong, and then you push your hand towards the door or the dash, it just everything, everything just squeaks. If you're sitting, you don't put your hand anywhere and you just breathe and it squeaks. Yes, I'm not exaggerating. Hear this. Now, I'm going to put my leg on the uh, door card. And all I'm doing is gently my knees touching the door card. After owning this car for a few years, I think I've gotten used to the squeaking. It does get annoying, but I think I can live with it. I've gotten used to it. But when you have a passenger who comes and sits in your car, they think the car's falling apart. And every time I've had a new passenger sit in my car, and I'm all excited to take them out for a spin in my nice, fancy convertible Roadster. And the first thing they would say is, why is everything squeaking? And it's just something that the car does. But uh, that sums up this video. If you choose to disagree or think that I'm being silly about something, please let me know in the comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you later. Ciao.